Unscripted is back, baby. A uh, couple disclaimers before we begin. Yes, I know it's been a while since we've done anything on this channel. Um, my computer broke. And there's not much I could do. Uh, all of our videos were on there. So even the things that I did have finished, uh, I released as much as I could before. I just, I, it, they're all on my computer, so I don't have them online. Obviously, A, B, um, I, we can't film anything if we can't post things, so there has been a complete hiatus on that. I am sorry, but we're back. Hey guys, quick update. So, I did say I didn't have a computer to edit on, and uh, now I do. It's not actually my computer, it's my dad's. So, I don't really know if gaming videos are going to be coming back anytime soon. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't know where I'm going to put this in timeline of everything. But, um, just, so this video has been slightly edited because I can, and it needed to be. Um, but, just so you know, that's how, this is how I want to do unscripted from now in the future. So, uh, you can keep an eye out for more unscripted videos like this. Uh, and also, hopefully, that means gaming videos can return soon. But anyway, enjoy the video. Or maybe you're already halfway through, I don't know. I really don't know where I'm going to put this. Sorry. Well, we're not. My computer is still broken. Uh, but Unscripted is back, uh, in a new format. Uh, we're doing live action now because it's the only thing I can do. Uh, and I really desperately had movies to talk about. I have like four movies. Oh. Oh, it's beginning. Um, that's going to happen. It's just duct taped to the ceiling and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Uh, but that brings me to the next point. I'm not cutting this at all. Which is fairly normal for you guys, but... Typically, I have a lot of stuttering issues that I cut out of the final audio just because it's boring to listen to or whatever. But, um, I can't, because I don't have any software because I don't have a computer. So, this is the raw footage directly from my phone on scripted. Today, we're talking about X-Men. Branding a set. X-Men. On a fateful August 12th. 2020, Kyle Rothmeyer decided to embark on a journey that would cost him his sanity. This journey, of course, was watching all seven X-Men movies in one single day. I can't stress this enough. I spent more time on August 12th watching X-Men movies than I did sleeping or eating. Think about that one. I have notes on upon notes upon notes of X-Men movies, most of which weren't good. Um, but anyway, I do want to clarify, I'm only talking about the seven mainline X-Men movies, which would be the original trilogy from 2000 to 2006, uh, First Class, uh, and then Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix. Uh, I'm not talking about any of the spin-off movies, because obviously... Didn't want to watch any more X-Men movies. Um, but also it just wouldn't physically be possible and I don't have access to all those movies. And I don't want to watch X-Men Origins Wolverine ever again. But um, I guess we're, we should begin where our story began. X-Men. This movie was good. Not great. Not fantastic. But it was good. I mean, I didn't hate it. I think... This movie really did a good job introducing us into this world of mutants and the problems they face every day. And, I mean, it did a pretty good job of laying the groundwork for this entire franchise. Sorry, I have notes because I watched these almost a week ago and I don't remember any of them. Um, I put, I wrote down, it's definitely not a great film, but I understand why it was extraordinary for its time. Um, it did a great job balancing screen time between the four main X-Men, which are Jean Grey, Cyclops, Wolverine, and Storm. Um, while still being a story focused on Wolverine. Uh, and the plot was really easy to understand, but yet still really interesting to follow. And, uh, was really thought-provoking. Which is something I really liked about some of these movies, was it led you to kind of think for yourself. Like, in this one, it was... Uh, should we make mutants register themselves? Uh, so, kind of like a Civil War, Captain America Civil War, 
kind of thing, but with X-Men. And it's like, well, I don't know, should we, is it, are they a danger to the public, or are some of them just good? And obviously the answer is some of them are good, and just, you know, trying not to get killed by all the bad people in the world, but, um, overall I think the movie was good. The special effects were much better than what I was expecting, and, uh, I mean, it just, it was a great film. I don't know if I'd watch it again, but I don't know if it's a great film. It's a good film. That's about all I have to say. I don't really remember much of what happened. I remember not liking how Sabretooth looked. Um, and being very, very weirded out that they put Toad in this movie. I love Toad. Toad is a, uh, one of my favorite X-Men villains. Um, I never needed to see him on the big screen. Ever. And they did it. They did it. So, um, kudos to them, I guess. Anyway, moving on to X2. I wanted to print a poster off for this one, but my phone wouldn't let me. And instead of trying to find another file that would print, I decided to draw it. This movie... That's people's favorite X-Men movie. Those people are wrong. You are wrong. Look, I'll, I'll admit opinions are opinions, but that's just the wrong opinion. X2 was boring. X2 made no sense. X2 had worse special effects than the first movie. X2 was not interesting. Here's what I wrote on the day I watched the movie. The story was boring and at times confusing. The Jean Grey, Wolverine, Cyclops love triangle felt forced. I didn't care about Striker as a villain. I wish I could have seen more Cyclops, Storm, and Jean Grey in this movie. A sorry excuse for a sequel. The Jason Stryker and Professor X thing was dragged on way longer than believable. Terrible CGI. I want, I want to go into a few things there. Because this is... People say this one is better than the first. They are wrong. This is not the worst X-Men movie. But that's not saying anything. Uh, my biggest issue... Well, I don't know about my biggest issue. One of my big issues in this movie is uh, the villain, Stryker, who's the guy who created Wolverine. Um, that's falling, by the way. Yeah. Um, he was not interesting as a villain. Like, I don't care what he was doing. Um, and then he brings out a son, who I guess is a mutant, who Professor X, like, tried to fix, but then made worse or something. I don't know, they don't explain it. But then, like, he has this power where, like, he can get inside people's heads. And the... They dragged this, like, plotline on for, like, half the movie. And I get, like, you kind of have to intersplice it. But it goes on for an hour and a half. And, like, they're, the, uh, the rest of the X-Men are having this whole journey until this is happening. And nothing's really, like, they're just walking around the mansion. Like, I Professor X is smarter than that, I feel. Or he's like, okay, why are there just pauses in time? Something is up. And... It just felt so degrading to the audience and to the characters that this was happening. Also, I know the Wolverine, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Love Triangle thing. That's a thing in the comics, I know. I know I shouldn't be booing on this uh, storyline, but it, it didn't feel genuine. It felt super rushed. It felt super forced. And I did not care. I don't want to see Wolverine with Jean Grey in this movie. Not even for, like, there was not even a second of doubt in my mind. It's like, okay, she belongs with Cyclops. I don't care. Um, but that brings me to X-Men The Last Stand. A movie that a lot of people dislike. Those people are also wrong. Because this movie is one of the best movies in the trilogy. Uh, here's what I wrote about that on August 12th. A return to great cinema. An interesting B-plot of Dark Phoenix, which, although I believe could have made a great two-part A-plot, I'll admit, this wasn't the best Dark Phoenix story they could have told. Uh, it worked well with what the director wanted, uh, and it... Ask the question, should we accept a cure for mutants, or the weaponization of said cure? Um, again, it kind of led a discussion in my mind. It was like, okay, well, 
Goku is really wrong here. I'm okay with... I think if I were a mutant, I would be okay with a cure until they started weaponizing it. That's when I started having a problem with the villains once again. Um, but it's a great story with high stakes. Um, Beast was in it, and I love Beast as a character. I love Nightcrawler as a character, too, but he just wasn't interesting in X2. But I love Beast. He was great in this movie. And, um, I like the focus being spread a bit more off of Wolverine. And overall, I think this is a great film. And I'm willing to acknowledge it has some flaws. The Professor X dying scene? It wasn't great. It wasn't super emotional. I didn't really care. Um, Cyclops dying I cared more for. And we didn't even see it. Um, what else even happens in this movie? Magneto does the bridge? Okay, that is an iconic scene. And if you're telling me that you don't like this movie... You have to at least admit you like that scene because that scene is great. Um, but other than that, I mean, what's not to love about this movie? The the cure storyline was beautifully done. The Dark Phoenix storyline worked. It worked, and it wasn't trying to be a Dark Phoenix movie, unlike other X Men movies that I watched. It wasn't. It wasn't a Dark Phoenix movie first and foremost. I think people have made this movie into a Dark Phoenix movie, but it wasn't. It was a last stand against the humans. Against the cure. And that's what this movie was. Dark Phoenix was the B-plot. And I think it worked for what this movie wanted it to be. And I think people give this movie a lot of negative criticism when they really shouldn't. And I don't know, I just really enjoy this movie. Um, but then remember everything about this movie and then forget it. They erase it from the timeline pretty quickly. So, now we go on to X-Men. The conventional, uh, I don't know, I printed the poster in French and I didn't realize. It says, like, come on, it says late commencement. I learned how to pronounce it like four this morning and then I forgot. Um, I can understand why this is people's favorites. It's not my favorite. It's close. But, um, I understand why people love that movie. It was a great, great film. I remember seeing trailers for that when I was, like, eight, and not having any expectations for that being good. I remember, uh, like, seeing posters in school, like, of teachers who were like, oh, I love this movie. And I was like, it's X-Men, aren't X-Men movies bad? Um, because this was before Days of Future Past, which would have been my real introduction to X-Men. I didn't grow up on X-Men. I didn't really read any of the X-Men comics as a Fantastic Four boy, as a Spider-Man boy. Um, but anyway, here were my uh, written opinions on First Class, and then I'll probably elaborate on them just because I didn't write a whole lot down. Um, although not my favorite, First Class is arguably the best X-Men film. Um, telling the origin of the X-Men, First Class mixes charm and humor with drama and great storytelling. Beast starting flesh colored was also a nice touch. Uh, this movie had some great scenes and it was much better than I was expecting. Great classic X Men look. So, obviously, that's referring to the costumes. The costumes were through yellow and blue, were so nice. I was so sick of the black leather uh, costumes because in the early 2000s we didn't think we could make the yellow ones work. Also, sorry, my dog is barking. Uh, I can't do anything about it. Um,. But anyway, I do think making Beast give himself the blue color was not something this movie needed to do, but it was something, it was a nice touch. It was something that references the comics, and I really, I love skin colored Beast in the comics, and I love Blue Beast in the comics. Um, And overall, I thought this was a great film. It told a great story. Um, Magneto lifting the submarine was awesome. Um, just, like, the relationship between these characters are really good and well-written. Um, and it makes you care about these characters. I didn't think I was going to care about Havoc. I didn't think I was going to care about Havoc. Um, who else is even in this movie? There's, uh, Darwin. I love Darwin. I a huge Darwin fan as of right now. Um, but anyway, I, again, it's not my favorite, but I can totally see why it would be your favorite.
if not just the best X-Men film uh, out there. But now let's get to my actual favorite action film. Uh, this one I had seen before. Uh, I rented it on Redbox about a year after it came out in theaters. Uh, and then I, I actually bought the extended cut of it, which is the one I watched for this viewing. And which is technically what are we talking about? Just because I don't know what scenes weren't in the original. But um, X-Men Days of Future Past, specifically the rogue cut, was... One of the greatest films ever made. Um, just from the fact that it's the fifth X-Men movie, and it's good, is a testament to itself. Um, and before I get any further in this statement, yes, I know, like, half of the Last Stand movie just continuity-wise got erased from this movie. Don't question it. I'm talking specifically about this and not about the overall timeline of what's happening because I know Magneto shouldn't have his powers, Rogue shouldn't have her powers, it doesn't make sense, but they just do, and you have to accept it and move on. So, why I think this movie is so great is because you're jumping into the fifth movie, even, like, you don't have to see any of the other movies to understand this one. This is my first X-Men movie. I hadn't seen First Class or any of the original trilogy when I originally saw that back in 2015. Or even the second time I watched it when I bought it, the extended cut. You do not need to know anything about X-Men. This movie explains everything you need to know other than Wolverine has claws. Um, everything is told to the audience. Or it's not talking down to you if you, are, if you have seen all the other movies. But it's catching everyone else. Which was really nice. Um, and also the time travel could have been a huge disaster for this. Like, just storytelling-wise, it could have been rough. This movie handled time travel really well as well. Um, not to mention the fun characters, the, the humor again, um, the great acting on everyone's behalf. Jennifer Lawrence, Hugh Jackman, um, Michael Fassbender. I can't think of the guy who plays Young Professor X, but he does a great job. Um, I am blanking on his name, I'm so sorry. But, um, everyone in this movie was great, and I think it might be one of the greatest superhero movies, if not just the greatest, one of the greatest movies of all time. Um, and I feel like we just don't give Days of Pass enough credit, even though we give it a lot of credit. Um, but once again, everything that rises must fall. That is figurative and literal for this next movie, we're talking about X-Men Apocalypse. I also own X-Men Apocalypse. I didn't rent this one. I got it for $5 at Walmart. Six months after it came out in theaters. That's how bad this movie was. $5. It's one of the worst films I've ever seen. Well, it was at the time, at least. When I first saw it back in 2017-2018. But, rewatching it... It wasn't as bad as I remember. It wasn't good. It was not good. The, the writing was boring. The villain was uninteresting and I don't really care about him. The fact that they made Storm evil at first and then there's just, the, just no like repercussions to her being evil. It peed me off the first time, but it peed me off especially now that I've seen all the other X-Men movies. And they just never like care. They don't care that Storm started off as evil. Like, not even in this movie or the next movie. They just blindly trust her now that she's an X-Men. Um, I, I could say a lot about this movie. I could say the Quicksilver scenes were good. I could say the Apocalypse scenes were bad. You've heard this probably, right? This movie wasn't good. There was like two good parts about it, and that was the arcade scene and Quicksilver saving everybody. And even Quicksilver Saving Everybody isn't that good in this movie. Quicksilver Saving Everybody in the first movie was cool because it was new. And in this movie it was just like drawn out and way too long. And I get it, like, oh, he's fast. You did it already. You're just beating a dead horse now. And I thought it was cool to see the Apocalypse was faster, but it wasn't cool enough. Also, 
not super important, not even really a nitpick. Just pointing out, this is the third X-Men movie in a row to reuse footage from another X-Men movie. First Class used the uh, beginning of Mag Magneto's like origin story in the Auschwitz uh, from the first movie, and then first uh, Days of Future Past used stuff from First Class, and this used stuff from Days of Future Past. Or First Class, I don't remember. I remember noting that, though, being like this is the third movie that is used other people's footage. But, um, that's not super important to me. I do want to talk about one scene in particular about this movie. I love Magneto's family dying. And I don't mean that in a dark way, although it is a bit dark. Uh, let me get, let me just clear some things up. Magneto's story, his backstory has always been dark. From, like, the first movie where it's like, oh yeah, he's taken away from his family in a concentration camp. That's dark. And I knew going into that movie that he had a dark history. And I knew it was kind of like that. I didn't know exactly the exact. And then in first class, he actually finds his mother, he reunites with his mother just to have her shot because she can't stop the bullet in time. That's dark. And, and now he's finally happy. He's in a town in Russia. He's got a wife. He's got a daughter. And they both, they both get shot right in front of him. And I can't, it, Every layer of darkness that Magneto's story gets helps explain why he is the way he is. And I really like that about this, even though I hate to see it happen to him. I love him as a character, and I really wish he would be a good guy, but I totally understand why he's a bad guy, and it is because of all these things that happened to him. So, I mean, that's about it I can say about that movie. Psylocke was in it, I think. Um... Archangel was in it, I think. They reintroduced Nightcrawler, and once again, they made him boring. Um, but now we talk about the final X-Men movie I watched, Dark Phoenix. I hate this movie. There's not an ounce of joy I got watching that movie. Not one. I hate it. If this isn't a controversial opinion, it's bad. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I might not be qualified to review this movie. Um, where I fell asleep in a little bit, like, I started dozing off in Days of Future Past. That's okay, because I've seen the movie before, and I know what I missed. And I, like, never truly fell asleep. I fell asleep during the, the final battle of this movie. And I don't, I, like, I was like, oh, I could rewind. I didn't. I I saw, uh, spoiler alert, I saw Jean Grey die, and I saw the battle begin. So, like, I didn't miss anything. Uh, of, of an action, a final battle scene is only interesting if the rest of the build-up is interesting. You care about these characters. But I didn't care about young Cyclops. I didn't care about young Jean Grey. I didn't. I care about Young Beast because of First Class and Days of Future Past, and I care about Mystique because of those movies, but then they killed off Mystique and, like, half the interest went down. Um, Magneto's off doing his own thing once again. Uh, he, he really is just running from the fact that he's Magneto, which, I mean, I get it. I get, I totally understand why you would, but it just doesn't line up with his character or what he would do. I understand maybe the first time in Apocalypse why you would do it, but, like, why do it again? You, you're... Start bending metal and killing people with it. That's your thing. That's your thing when you're not doing it on board. Um... It... I don't know. I don't understand this whole refugee thing. I... At least not why he's there. Um... I don't care that Jean Grey killed Mystique. I really don't. Like, it was sad that Mystique died, but it it wasn't, like, Jean Grey, you monster. Miss, Miss, uh, Magneto's gonna kill you. Um, it, it felt a little bit repetitive from Dark, or from The Last Stand, and I'm sure that's just because I watched them 
way too close together, but it, I mean, it's the same story, but just worse. Everything, the train scene was awful. The final battle scene was literally, like, again, I fell asleep. I realized I fell asleep, like, I missed two minutes or three minutes of the movie and went, yeah, I'm not rewinding. I don't care. Um, the one, the one scene where they're trying to get in the mansion was okay. But again, I don't care about this alien race. I don't know what they are. They were supposed to be scrolls, and then Captain Marvel took that from them. Captain Marvel took their final battle from them, too. It was like, maybe this movie could have been okay if it was what it was originally intended to be. But I remember seeing that first trailer and just knowing this movie was going to be bad. No, no one looked interested. There were reports that said Jennifer Lawrence hated the movie. Like, way before the first trailer came out. Um, was Quicksilver even in this movie? Oh, he's in the beginning. And then they they find a convenient way to get rid of him. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, th this movie. I think there's nothing to say about this movie. I don't remember anything that happened in this movie. And I watched it maybe a week ago. I, I, I had notes for some of the earlier movies I watched. Because I wrote them down during Apocalypse or Days of Future Past, maybe. Um, and, like, even those ones, I remember most... Like, I was trying to come up with the, the ranking of where I, how many stars each of these movies get. And the final battle for almost all of them, I was able to remember at least. And a couple other the big action moments, or just moments in general. I mean, the only moment I remember from this is the train and Jean Grey killing Mystique. And then, that's it. That's it. Um, they keep, I, I don't, I'm not sure if this timeline that we're in with Dark Phoenix and Apocalypse, I don't know when it diverges from the old timeline, because I feel like it shouldn't have happened yet, but we're seeing two different stories of the same story. Uh, in the same timeline, I, that's why I don't care about Days of Future Past not following the last stand because just none of these movies have any sense of what timeline is happening and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter as long as it loosely ties into this the last one it the last good one it doesn't matter no one cares no one in this no one on this movie cared about this movie and it showed so i mean with that being said i do have rankings for each of these movies uh, I, I, they are being compared to the other movies, but I, I don't know what all the rankings of the other movies were, and I forgot to write them down. So, there is a comparison to be made, just I haven't made it up here. But with that being said, all of these movies are being ranked with the same three categories, um, action, plot, and as always, entertainment. So action is obviously how good are the action sequences, uh, because it can't be an action movie without at least one action sequence. Um, how interesting was the plot? How, uh, how involved was I, the viewer, in the plot? And how entertained was I throughout the movie? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So we're just gonna go down the list again, we're starting with X-Men 1. Um, and overall this movie got nine stars. Four for plot, because, as I said, this movie had a fairly good plot, I was fairly cohesive, and although it wasn't the greatest film in the world, uh, I knew it was happening at all times, and I understood why it was happening, and it asked really good questions, which I love. Uh, entertainment was two. I think probably while I was watching it, it was probably closer to a three. I also started this movie at like 3.30 in the morning. This whole endeavor began because I wanted to watch X-Men 1, 2, and Dark Phoenix, because I knew I had X-Men 2 on my DVR, and I knew one was on Disney Plus, and I thought Dark Phoenix was on Disney Plus. Um, that kind of devolved into a train wreck of watching seven X Men movies. But this began at three thirty in the morning, so I was a bit tired, I was a bit you know out of it. I think I enjoyed this more at the time, but looking back, it wasn't great. I don't want to say it's bad because obviously it led up to this whole thing and. I totally understand why in the early 2000s this would have been a great hit because your only other big superhero movie at the time would have been Spider-Man. Um, which, obviously, I'm not saying is a terrible movie. I love Spider-Man. But 
he just didn't have a whole lot of options, and I can totally see why this worked. And I'm honestly surprised how well they did the team dynamic. Uh, just not, you know, not having that experience yet. But, um, and then for action, I gave it a three because the Statue of Liberty battle was fine, but it wasn't great. I wasn't super invested in that. And the only other real action sequence I remember in that movie would be, um, Sabretooth, like, attacking Wolverine and Rogue. Um, oh, and Wolverine being, like, pinned up against the subway, which is a really cool scene. I love that scene, actually. Um, but yeah, so that had nine stars. Um, X2 for plot, entertainment, and action. They all got two stars, so it's a six-star total. Um, it just wasn't super entertaining. Plot was pretty confusing and just boring. And the action sequences, the CGI wasn't as good as the first one. Uh, the final battle was... Something. I couldn't tell you. And I just don't care about this movie. Uh, Last Stand. For plot, entertainment, and action, I give it a 4. Which uh, leaves this movie with 12 stars. Um, the action sequences that really stick in my mind are the final battle, obviously, where they're trying to break into the hospital and get the the mutant who created the cure. Um, that's a great scene. I don't care what you say. There's nothing you can say to make me believe otherwise. Um, the Cyclops dying scene, also very good. I'm not sure I'd call it an action scene, but I'm going to consider it in this category, just because why not. Um, as I said, for entertainment... This is basically personal preference, but I just, you know, I had a good time watching this movie. And, again, maybe it was affected by the fact that I thought this movie was going to be really bad. Uh, and that's too, probably the same way for the opposite reason. I thought it was supposed to be really, really good. But just, I don't know. I love this movie, and you can't take that away from me. Uh, but I'll take your opinion away from you because it's your own opinion, unless you agree with me. Or you don't, I don't care. Um... And plot, again, I love the Cure plot, uh, and the Dark Phoenix plot was told cohesively and well in its short amount of time, and I enjoyed everything it had to offer. Um, First Class also gets 12 stars, but for a slightly different reason. For plot, again, it gets 4 stars, because I think the plot was really good, uh, but not quite perfect. I very hesitant to give anything 5 stars, which makes... This next category is super impressive because entertainment got a five stars. And I was just blown away by this movie. Um, again, I can totally understand why it, people adore this movie. Um, I thought it was especially weird. As soon as, like, when it first came out and I was littler, I don't know, 2012 maybe, so I would be, I would have been 10. I thought an action movie without Wolverine would have been weird. Because uh, I grew up, Wolverine was one of the X-Men I did grow up with. He was in Superhero Squad, and I watched Superhero Squad all the time. Uh, he was not a regular, but he appeared in Avengers vs. Fantasy Heroes every now and then. Um, and just, it felt weird to have the X-Men without Wolverine. And at the time, I didn't realize that the X-Men began without Wolverine. But, um, I think this movie did a really, really good job just keeping me engaged and entertained and wanting to know more. And there were parts of this movie where I didn't have subtitles on, and they're just speaking in a different language, and I was still entertained. Um, with that being said, the action is a three. I don't really remember the final battle that much, which means it didn't really stick with me. Um, I do remember some of the scenes, obviously, uh, Darwin being killed, and them all, like, testing out their powers, and... <coughs> um... Magneto lifting the submarine and bent curving the bullet. All really great things. Um, so overall, 12 stars as well. Future Past. My favorite movie in this list. 14 out of 15 stars, which is by far the highest thing I've ever watched on this show. Um, I want to give a quick explanation. Plot, 5 stars. Again, it explains everything you need to know in this movie. Uh, and the time travel could have gone really, really wrong, and they did it right. Uh, they also did a really good job making me care about uh, the characters like Iceman and Kitty Pryde. 
Uh, even my first watching this movie, I cared about them, even though it didn't, I shouldn't have, you know, I didn't, they don't have any characterization, uh, in this movie in particular, because it's, it's in Last Stand, um, and on this rewatch that I had watched Last Stand and the other X-Men, I totally understood, like, why we should care about these characters, it was awesome to see them back on the screen, and I was really really just in love with this movie all the way through, even more than I had been the last time I saw it. Um, entertainment, a five. Obviously, if I'm going to give first class a five, I have to give this movie a five. I adore this movie. It finally gave us real Sentinels. I know the beginning of Last Stand had Sentinels, and I think the beginning of Last Stand is really good. Uh, like that scene where they're all in the training dome. But this one, just all the way through, um... It made it, you care about every one of these characters and every one of these smaller plots. Um, and it just keeps you super engaged. And even, like, uh, the weird beast mystique almost sex scene in the road cut, which I thought was weird the first time I saw the road cut, makes a lot of sense. And I understand why it was, like, leading up to that now that I've seen first class. So, there was, like, I was fully enjoying this movie the entire time, even though I was tired because I had been watching action movies for, what, 12 hours straight, 17 hours straight, or some number like that. Um, and then action, I'm going to give it a four. Uh, obviously, the final battle is a lot more talking. Um, like, the Sentinels are cool and all. Him lifting up the baseball stadium is really cool, but it just, it's not a whole lot of fighting in that scene. Obviously, there's the, uh, the future, where they're fighting a sentinel, the future sentinels, and there's the scene where Mystique is, like, running down the, I mean, you know, they just shot her. Those are all great action scenes, I just, it can't be a perfect movie, and it's not, and the action scenes are a bit lackluster in this movie, not, like, bad, but just, you know, they could have been better. Um, Apocalypse, uh, for plot and action, this movie got a three. Uh, which probably is higher than I would have ranked it after first watching it again. The story was a lot more cohesive this time around. I don't know if it was just because I was just in, like, the state of mind of X-Men and I knew what they were talking about, or if it was just, like, I understood it the second time more. Um, but I, it wasn't a terrible plot. It wasn't great. They, they reintroduced the, uh, human girl from the first class, which was boring. And then they have... Storm just and Psylocke just introduced, which I think is boring, but I didn't. It wasn't a terrible plot. It certainly could be worse. Um, and the action is the same way. The final battle wasn't good. It's not terrible. I just don't care for it. I think the Quicksilver scene really saved this movie. And as I said earlier, it's not even that good of a Quicksilver scene. Um, yeah, for entertainment, this movie had it too because I was checking out for a good portion of this movie. Even though I was watching and engaged, I was ready for this movie to be over from the moment I clicked the play. Um, and Dark Phoenix. For plot, I got a two. There was a story. For action, I got a two. There was hypothetically a battle that I fell asleep in. And for entertainment, I got a zero. Because I hate this movie, and not one ounce of joy was given to me by watching X-Men Dark Phoenix. Not a single ounce. So, out of these movies alone, uh, obviously Future Past, my favorite, followed by X-Men 3 The Last Stand and First Class, tied at second place with 12 stars, uh, and then X-Men 1 with 9 stars, and then Apocalypse with 8, and then X-2 with 6 stars, and Dark Phoenix with 4 stars. Um, I know that's not... I'm going to have a lot of people disagree with me on that, but... Those people were probably wrong and saying X2 is good. Um, although I am open to discussion about these movies in the comments. Maybe I just didn't pick up on something because I watched these movies at ungodly hours of the day. And or was sleep deprived while watching them. Um, but definitely not neither of those. Uh, I believe after Last Stand I took a half hour break before First Class. And I texted Jack, who I run the channel with if you don't know. And I just said, hey, I just watched three action movies, four more to go. And he responded with, I just woke up. Um, and that would have been like at 8.39 in the morning, probably. Maybe a little bit later. 
But I, I mean, I started this at three. I ended this at nine. I took a nap between first future past and apocalypse, and that's like the biggest break I took, and that was maybe an hour and a half. Um. So yeah, this was a wild experience. I hadn't seen most of these X Men movies again. I'd only seen Future Past and Apocalypse before this. Um. And just, it was much different of an experience than I thought. I thought some of the good movies were going to be bad, and thought some of the bad movies were going to be good. Um, and I just think overall this was a very influential series. I understand why people love X-Men. And I understand why people, like, I've read some of the comics now that I've, a bit more, like, I've read some of the X-Men comics, and they're great. And I think it really is a good story and a great allegory. Because, it, it, I mean, at the end of the day, X-Men is an allegory for racism. Um, if you weren't aware of that. Maybe you should watch the first X-Men again. But, um, I was supposed to watch some of these movies. The original trilogy, one of my friends lent me, uh, back when I was in middle school. And I just, I didn't have a chance to watch it before I had to return them. And I was really disappointed by that. Um, but I finally had a chance to watch them, thanks to Disney+. Plus. Um, not sponsored or anything. But, um, I had a great time doing this and building a set that inevitably collapsed on me. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Unscripted. Uh, we'll see you next Thursday with, I don't know, maybe I'll do the other movie I've been wanting to talk about. Or maybe I'll find a new one in between. I'm not giving any hints because I honestly don't know what's happening right now. Uh, but we'll definitely see you next Thursday. Uh, gaming videos are still on hold, obviously, because I can't edit anything. Um, but I hope this kept you entertained for 41 minutes. Goodbye. Oh, also we have uh, social media at Exodus Comics Official on DeviantArt and at Exodus Comics on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we are going to have comics run again as soon as I can get my computer back up. So cross your fingers on that one, boys and girls and other people. Um, see you next Thursday.